Hey everybody, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Did you do any exercise today? I'm on a 10 day, 100 burpee a day challenge from the gym, starting to really get into my shoulders and back, jumping up and down. But if you haven't got out there today, get out there and do some moving. But we've got a body armor test today, because after all, king of body armor destruction here, and we love poking holes in body armor. This one's been highly anticipated. This is from Adept. This is their Colossus Beyond Level 4 RF3. This is their ultra AP rated plate, basically kind of a future-proof piece of body armor here. I love the outside graphics on it, although you know you put in a plate carrier, you don't really see this. This guy weighs 6.585 pounds. It's approximately 1.15 inches thick, or for those guys across the pond, 29.55 millimeters. It is multi-curve. You can see all those curves right there. If you are a first time viewer to my channel, I do things completely different than about everyone else on YouTube. I strive to give you guys as much information as possible. So I may be a little on the drier side, so if you get a little bit bored but you still wanna watch, always click that sucker to 2X. So I try to recreate as many NIJ constants out here as I can. So we shoot at 45 feet. That is the official testing distance for rifle armor. We shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario. We're not gonna put any magazines or plate carriers in front of this, it's all worst case scenario. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina, number one clay donated by Siobhan. That acts as our compressible media so that our body armor is solidly mounted and we can kind of get a representation of back face. The clay has to be heated to like 103 degrees and it's only about 65 to 70 degrees outside today. So the clay is gonna be harder because it's oil based. So if you see some kind of dent in our clay at 44 millimeters at this temperature, when it gets warmer, it's gonna be probably failing, which for the NIJ is over 44 millimeters. We also use a chronograph whenever possible. We use a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX because we gotta know the velocity of that bullet. Because this employs a ceramic stripe face, I'm gonna murder this scientific name. It's silicon carbide mixed with titanium diboride. That's a mouthful. As mentioned, this employs a ceramic stripe face. So per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped it on its face two times as a preconditioning test with the rig that I built. I've started to mark all of our plates with a DT and a check mark indicating that they've been dropped. And then I also do a torque test to ensure that I don't hear any cracking. And if it passes a torque test, I've got a TQ and a check mark marked on there. If it were to be cracked, I have a C and a check mark. And so far, this particular plate has a nice high density foam on the stripe face so that will protect it and it passed our torque test. I also put a spreadsheet here at the beginning that kind of foreshadows all the different threats that we're gonna shoot at it and then I fill them out, verify them. We do a tear down at the end so we can see the guts of this plate and then we're gonna send you on your merry way. For a little more insight into our material makeup for our plates, typically there are three main ceramic types used currently for body armor. There's alumina, that is the heaviest and typically the most economical. Then there's silicon carbide, which is lighter and particularly stronger than alumina. Then the last compound, which is the lightest, is boron carbide. All of those have advantages and disadvantages. Typically, silicon carbide is good at stopping some of our tungsten core threats, and then boron carbide is good at steel core, and then when we get to the tungsten stuff, that shows weaknesses. So this silicon carbide titanium diboride is some magical hybrid that they've developed to help stop some of these tungsten threats. So I have a couple threats right here that we're gonna shoot at this plate. I think because of the advanced threats that I'm gonna shoot at it, the amount that we can put on this plate is gonna be limited. So I have our M2 armor piercing. That is the standard at which level four is judged by, but these are my 300 Winchad specialties. So these are loaded at 300 Winchester Magnum speeds. We have our 24 inch TC compass, got a, a Yankee Hill Phantom M2 up there, suppressor for a little more velocity. And then this guy right here, because Adept said the Colossus is rated for M993, we went to the Holy Grail. This is M993 in a 300 Winchester Magnum case loaded to 300 Winchad speeds. We'll take these three shots and then we'll go down and look at the plate. I'll place these fairly far apart. This is a edge to edge strike face. I am not sure if it is a solid strike face 
or if it's a tile array of any kind, if it's solid, these hits are probably gonna degrade it pretty quickly. So this should be in the upper part of the plate. Did we get a velocity reading off that? 33.37. Nice. And then I'll place this one in the bottom corner where the thickness is. 32.39. Okay. Now this is the holy grail. This is the first time I've ever done this on YouTube. I'm not sure what kind of velocity. We should see, what, 34? 400 feet per second, hopefully, out of this. I'm going to place this on the left-hand side, uh, right to where it says, like, ultra. Woo! All right, these three hits, I believe, are fair. Our first shot was up here, right where I wanted it. Our second shot was down here, and then the holy grail was right there. We're seeing something come out of the side of the plate right over here. There's a little bit of degradation up here as well. This one's a solid hit down here. Place those bets in the comments below. No freaking way. Stopped our M993 going 3,400 freaking feet per second. And our two M2 APs wind chads. That's amazing. Now our back face, like I said, this clay is cold. That's a pretty good sized dimple there and there. Our dimple up here from the Holy Grail, 22 millimeters. And down here on that M2AP wind chad, 25 millimeters. So whatever kind of materials that they're using for the back face, you know, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, must be a really high grade because it's actually stopping it. All right, folks, I was very impressed with the performance of that plate with just those three shots. The silicon carbide titanium diboride, I think I just like saying that, is rather impressive. So I had to come up with something that I hope can maybe penetrate this. We've used this in the past, very popular video. This is 8mm Mauser SMKH for tungsten core, 196 grains, moving pretty darn fast. This is a Yugo M48A. We've got the no gunsmith modifications and necessary scope rail on here. It does put it at a chin weld, but we're only using it for armor testing, so it doesn't matter too much. In that video, this particular bullet penetrated a level 4 aluminum strike face at 100 yards and also punched a hole clean through a 3.8 AR500 armor or 3.8 AR500 steel target from RMA. This one's going to go dead center of the plate, well, hopefully. There should be about a 2 inch drop. I'm really having to dig deep in my bag of tricks to find different rounds to throw at this plate. I have two more 30 caliber threats that I figure would be pretty interesting. The velocity of that SMKH though, that's a 196 grain bullet from a 23 point whatever inch barrel going 2,900 feet per second. All the surplus eight millimeter stuff at 196 grain pales in comparison to that, you know, 2,600 feet per second. So in our 30 cal threats, I have our M14 a1 that is originally in 30 at 6 it's armor piercing incendiary it has quite a bit of incendiary compound in it we have it loaded to 300 wind chad velocities then we have the vpam 12 threat this is a swiss pap round it's 196 grain as well it has a little tungsten core in it and it's supposed to be i think 2650 feet per second we'll take that shot first probably in the lower hand or lower left hand corner We've got the TC compass back out. So this should be the bottom left hand corner. Twenty very close to specification. I had to hand load those. Now for my favorite API, our M14 A1. This should be in the upper right hand corner
And you can just hear that pop. It loves burning stuff. So much fire, so satisfying. I thought of this final threat in preparation of someday being able to get our hands on the Army's new 6.8 round. They have a round very similar to this, but the specifications are unknown. This is our M80A1. This is 130 grain copper core with a penetrating steel tip, very much like M855A1. We have this loaded in our 300 wind chad, so we should see 33 to 3400 feet per second. This plate is very much compromised, but like my wife says, I don't know when to quit. This will be in the middle bottom of the plate, kind of where it says strike face. Thirty-four, fifty-four. Woo! Okay, our final hits on our plate. Our SMKH was right here. Look at that little tiny entrance hole. Didn't really blow a whole lot out. Our M14 A1 API was up here, Mr. Flashy Flash. Then our VPAM specification was down here. We're a little close to the edge. I would consider that a fair hit though. It's about an inch and a half. Then our M80 A1 was right there. Place those bets in the comments below. Stress, see better days. Raw o raggy. Our SMKH penetrated. I kind of had a feeling, I apologize about the wind, I kind of had a feeling that that would because of how powerful that is. But our VPAM, our M80A1, and even our API at insane velocities stopped with this plate. As far as back face goes, I would say that M80A1 shot right there was the worst. Let's see if we can get in there. 38 millimeters. So in actual NIJ clay, that's probably gonna be quite a bit deeper. But for the actual level four rating for the NIJ or RF3, you get one hit on the plate. VPAM is a European standard for armor hits. And you get a three shot triangle pattern on there before they're done with the plate. This thing I think has to be probably the best level four, beyond level four plate that I've tested to date. Now this is where we get into the part that a lot of my followers like, the teardown. Try to give you guys some insight into the inner workings of some of this armor. This is our back nylon fabric cover. There is a thin piece of foam in here, but nothing too high density. Typically we've seen that before with some plates as a means of controlling back face, but this particular ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, I think is a high enough quality that it's doing its job. So here is our polyethylene backer. It does appear to be pressed. I measured it at about 600 thousandths with this plus this little piece right here. This was directly behind our strike face and for whatever reason it came off. Like I said, it does appear to be pressed like as in all these are pushed together and they can't be thumbed through like a book. But when you do put a lot of energy on them, they tend to separate. As confirmation, our only penetration was that SMKH round. We've got some fairly good sized dimples, especially from the M80A1, but otherwise impressive. Our front covering here, does have a little bit of foam on our strike face. You can see that foam right there. It's not very high density either, but when we performed a drop test, we did not have any cracking. You can see all of our shots on there. I didn't shoot any 5.56 at this plate because again, this is supposed to be beyond level four. And I don't think there's any 5.56 threats that I'm aware of that could penetrate this plate. This is our strike face. I measured it at approximately 423 thousandths thick. Confirmed it does extend edge to edge and it is a monolithic plate or monolithic strike face. If I could offer any constructive criticism, although based on the threats that it stopped, I don't know how much more you can improve upon this. I like the way that the RMA 1092 G2, the G1, and some of the HESCO plates have a lamination on our strike face to help it 
stay together. We did lose quite a bit of the strike face on the table here. There are two fairly solid pieces, maybe three left on the strike face. So I would say it held together pretty well. But when we do that lamination style strike face that we've seen in some of the other testing, I think it may go to lend itself better to multi-hit capability than as this is here. But otherwise, I don't think you can complain about the performance of this plate. Well, folks, let me know in the comments below if you think our Colossus plate is truly future-proof when it comes to armor-piercing threats, at least any time for the foreseeable future. Everything that I threw at this plate was above and beyond any specification that's currently outlined besides that VPAM, throughout, VPAM 12 threat profile, and it stopped all these things. That silicon carbide titanium diboride must be something very, very special. Whatever ultra high molecular polyethylene adept is using seems to be doing its job as well. Back face on all those threats that it stopped was controlled. Overall, I think adept built a winning plate with our Colossus here. The only downsides that I could think of that anyone could mark against this plate are that it is not currently NIJ certified and there is no country of origin listed. I'll try to annotate below if the Adept allows me to mention where it is made. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because I got to do those 100 burpees for today. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible. After all, there's a lot that goes into these. My wife and son are pretty much my main supporters of this channel. They come out here and help me do a lot of the stuff. My son likes to pick up the brass. But number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below. There are different affiliate links and or discount codes that essentially earn me a sales credit. They cost you nothing and that just helps support the channel. Some of those loads that I shot at that plate today cost over $100 a bullet or are essentially impossible to find. I'm not sure if I can get it set up with an affiliate code from Adept or not, but I'll definitely put that somewhere in the description if I do. Number two is Jake over at Adept Armor, who in full transparency provided me with this plate to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Level four beyond RF3, future proof, quote unquote, 